So this uh, predicted the sales, uh, and this is an interesting graph, simply because it says by the end of 2008, the number of 3D TVs in the marketplace is about 2 million. So there are already 2 million 3D TVs out there, and a lot of people like, don't actually appreciate that that's what they bought. There's a percentage of you out here now that probably have a 3D capable TV that don't realise. Uh, do a show of hands, who has a DLP TV? Okay, there's a couple. Did you know that there were 3D? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Right. But anyway, there's 2 million out there. This graph shows that by the end of this year, they're predicting 5 million. By the end of 2010, 15 million. That's a pretty big user base uh, that we can uh, go to. And I actually believe that once people start to see content uh, driven through from PlayStation, that, you know, we can probably get that graph higher. I would certainly expect to see peaks when the 3D movies are announced. There will, will be some cool movies, and at the moment there's no particular reason to buy a 3D TV, but as soon as you start seeing really cool content. So that's their prediction. I would expect to have seen a few peaks. Um, at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January, pretty much every TV manufacturer, like the hot topic was 3D TV, is coming. And they're, in, they're adding, like each one of them, are adding at least one to their very high-end TVs. Uh, so, I first saw HDTV proper through my Xbox 360 because it takes a while before cable, satellite, HD DVD, or, and uh, Blu ray took off. But you know, when you plugged in your Xbox 360, you could suddenly see very high quality. And I've got a feeling that this could happen again. It's like if game developers all start making the 3D games, then that could be the first way that people see it. It could be a little while before the 3D movies uh, find their way into the home. So what are these 3D uh, uh, technologies that are coming into the home? Well, first off, we can only do this through the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 because they are built, they are built on the high-end TVs by the HDMI. So it does need an HDMI Xbox. So we can't do this on the Wii, unfortunately. I love that console, but it's not going to do 3D anytime soon, I don't believe. Uh, so there's a few different types of technology. You have active glasses, so these are shutter glasses that flicker. Now I know about 10 years ago, this technology existed on the old CRT monitors, but they used a different refresh rate and you could detect a little bit of flicker. But these, there is no flicker. You can play it yourself afterwards. Uh, they look great. Uh, they work, uh, oh, I'll go on to that in a minute. So then you have the passive, this is the same as IMAX and the real these cinemas. You have simple filters that work on other screens, so we've got horizontal, vertical, and the circular polarization. And then you actually have some screens that are coming out that don't need glasses. And a lot of people say, I'll just wait until you don't need glasses. Now we've actually got our technology working on these, but they're just not quite ready for the home. Uh, and there needs to be this stepping point uh, for the next few years where we'll all, we'll all wear glasses, we'll see it's cool, and the TV manufacturers. It's, it's their next goal to get that working for us all. <coughs> so the active glasses, they work with the DLP projector, the DLP back screen, and some of the high-end plasmas that are coming out. The polarized, uh, you can do this with LCD. You can uh, polarize the pixels uh, on the, the screen. And, but the interesting point is, that lots of different manufacturers are using different technologies in different ways. It's a good thing in a way because it means that there's no dead avenues. It's like you can do 3D on plasma, DLP, or LCD, OLED, LED, LED. They will all be capable of 3D. So that's a very good thing. It's just that people are tackling it in different ways. And they're tackling it in different input formats. Uh, they all have theories on, on what is the best system. So you could alternate the frames and give it a left frame and a right frame. Uh, you can alternate the pixels, you can give it horizontal interlace, vertical interlace. You can do all of these things and they all do use different, which has been a major hassle for us. But we're game developer and we just write different drivers. It's like, I actually think this is one of the things that's going to slow down movies coming to the home. Is it's a little difficult uh, to work out which is the best technology. They have pros and cons. So, the, the first technical challenge we came across is the fact that uh, we bought one TV, get it working, buy another one, it doesn't work. Uh, so, you have to program that in. Uh, the passive displays, the LCDs, they, they are pixel mapped and 3D 
and worked on this kind of thing, and then building into the high-end TVs. And, and why not? Because clearly, you're going to be looking to get a, a 1080p beautiful TV before you start thinking, let's go for the 3D. So they tend to be built at the high end, which has meant that we've had to write our games in 1080p uh, before we were able to go 3D. There are some TVs that use 720, but you know, we're talking about mass market. We want to be able to ship it over there and make sure that it always works. Uh, the active glasses, um, they like the frame rate to be higher, the 60 frames. Now it does work slower, but it doesn't look nearly as cool. So, and then after all of that, you've got to render it twice. So what we're talking about is, we have to do games that render at 1920, 1080p, 60 frames a second, but actually then render it left and right and send to two, two frames at the same time, and we have a little drive in between that works out the type of interlacing uh, that is going to be in there. And I do appreciate why they said that the consoles aren't quite powerful enough to do this. Um, but they are, we're game developers, you know, and we can all do it. There are tricks to get the, the pixel fill right, and Alan will go through that in a minute. Too. The tricks you can do to get your games running in that. And the side effect is, your 2D games look pretty cool as well. So, one thing to note, um, there are a few uh, 3D PC products out there that use the left and the right HDMI or DVI. We can't support those. Uh, obviously the consoles uh, have that. So, there's lots of the formats, I've gone through that. We want to make games that are 2D games, that work seamlessly, that you can just flick a button and it goes to 3D. We've managed to get this working in our middleware, so let's turn into our engine so that it's a fairly seamless thing for people to do, and we can do it on PlayStation 30, 360. And we do it on the PC, but we do it on the PC in, in software, so we, we don't need uh, a particular graphic card. We've got our demos running on 